How's it going everyone, Jimmy here, and today I want to talk about why I'm quitting Street Fighter V, at least for now. The online experience in Street Fighter V since Arcade Edition is just horrible. It's really not enjoyable at all for me, because every single match is laggy. My blacklist uh, used to be completely empty before Arcade Edition, and now I'm pretty sure I'm getting closer to uh, the blacklist being completely full. This is really odd. It's, it's simply because every single opponent is laggy, so I feel like putting in pretty much everyone on my blacklist, which is stupid. It's, it's like a problem that is obviously, like it has nothing to do with my opponents. And um, yeah, if that's the case, then I simply can't stream the game anymore. My main content in Street Fighter V, on Twitch at least, is playing online. And if my main source of uh, like content is just like this, I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm obviously not gonna be playing or sitting through hours and hours of laggy opponents. And I'm not catching a break whatsoever. There are a couple of things that I did like switching from PlayStation 4 to PC. I bought the game on PC specifically because I was hoping it's an issue with PlayStation 4s. There's been like a lot of rumors out there. Basically, old PlayStation 4 seem to be having a lot of issues with Arcade Edition. The game is not running at 60 FPS uh, very smoothly. There seems to be frame drops from time to time, and we know the netcode is horrible at syncing up two machines to begin with, and if the game, obviously this is gonna make things worse, right? If the game can't predict properly on what frame each machine is gonna be. Whenever you start a round in Street Fighter V at the moment, you start the round with a good connection, hopefully a good connection, and then the longer the round continues, the worse the connection quality is going to become. This obviously seems like an issue with the netcode itself, or at the very least, it's an issue with the game not being able to predict what frame each machine is running on at any given time. And this is only a problem if the game is not running at 60 frames per second consistently. I truly believe this is a big issue that Capcom needs to fix. I mean, if the netcode is bad, uh, because it can't really synchronize two players mid-round. I'm not quite sure how technically challenging that would even be, but at the very least, if the game, like, if it starts out fine, and then after 10 seconds, it's already unplayable, then there's something wrong. There's just something wrong, and Capcom needs to address this. And this is what I'm basically experiencing at the moment. So, yeah, I'm gonna be dropping Street Fighter V for now, until either Capcom releases a, uh, a patch, which is highly unlikely by the way, because like not a lot of people are complaining about this, and I think there are multiple reasons why that's the case. Capcom really has an advantage here, because every time you face a laggy opponent, you can always think, okay, your opponent might be on Wi-Fi, or he just has a shitty connection, or whatever. There, there's, there are always so many variables that you have to consider, it's hard to even notice whether this is a problem with the netcode or if it's a problem with your opponents. It's interesting to note that not everyone seems to be having the same issues since Arcade Edition, which is odd because we know for a fact the game is dropping frames even offline since Arcade Edition, and uh, I can really only speculate as to why this is the case. It's probably a combination of multiple things that have to come together that either make the game feel just bad because really, it's 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 bad for everyone, but for some, it's really literally unplayable. And I think this is the the difference. Everyone is having a bad experience, but some for some it's so bad it's not even worth playing. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure what what exactly makes the game really bad for for everyone. It's probably a combination of where exactly do you live. Some are speculating Europeans are having more issues than uh, US players, for example, or Asian players, or especially like Japanese players always have the advantage of living in a small country with great internet. It's, it's always going to make things better for them, obviously. So yeah, it's probably a combination of different things that can make the game just bad or unplayable, and those include like the country that you play in, the service provider that you have, the router that you're using, this one I've seen personally where just changing the router made a big difference for some reason, 
and also the platform you're playing Street Fighter V on. And even like within the PlayStation 4 category, for example, there seems to be a big difference between the experience you're gonna have on a PlayStation 4 Pro and an old PlayStation 4. So keep that in mind. But okay, I think I'm done with ranting about how bad Street Fighter V is at the moment. I do hope things are gonna be better in the future. I will certainly check out like new updates and new characters whenever they do get released. And yeah, hopefully I'll have some fun with Street Fighter V once again in the future. So next up, let's talk about the future of my Twitch channel and the effects you'll see on YouTube as well. So ever since I started out on Twitch almost four years ago, I always hated the fact how dependent my channel was on Street Fighter. People tune in specifically to see me play Street Fighter, and I think this is very normal. It's also, like, every I think every content creator struggles with that. If you find yourself in a spot where people really enjoy a specific game you stream on Twitch, people will tune in specifically for that game. And uh, I think, as I said, everyone kind of has this problem, and I think now is a good time to finally break free of that. I don't want to, like, I really enjoy Street Fighter in general, and Street Fighter 5 has been amazing for my channel, but at the same time, I don't really want to be, like, just the Street Fighter guy on Twitch, and on YouTube as well. With that being said, one other game that I streamed on Twitch was also very, very popular. It was before I streamed Street Fighter 5, and it was actually, like, when I peaked, I think I peaked with that other game, which was Mario Maker. When I started streaming Mario Maker, I, I got like a whole different audience all of a sudden that tuned in because I was doing very, very difficult levels in Super Mario Maker, and I think I want to go back to that. So from now on, you will probably see a lot of Mario Maker streams as my main content at the moment. So what does that mean for my YouTube channel? I will not stop producing Street Fighter content anytime soon. I'm really happy with how the channel is developing here on YouTube. I'm very motivated to produce more, more tutorials, more uh, like matchup analysis videos, and like the stream highlights videos are always kind of easy for me to push out, and like those are actually the only ones that you will probably not see as frequently anymore, simply because I I won't be producing a lot of content on Twitch, and the stream highlights are mainly from my Twitch channel. So yeah. I probably have enough clips for maybe like five more episodes and then it will slowly uh, go away. But this will not stop me from providing tutorials, for example. This is one thing I always want to have to begin with. I always found that not a lot of like tutorials were out there on YouTube to explain to a more casual audience how to learn Street Fighter. And I think I can still provide this in the future. So yeah guys, you'll see a lot more variety from now on on this channel and I have a habit of putting my competitive spirit into whatever game I'm playing, so I'm sure I'll make it entertaining whatever I'm playing. So that's it for today's video, I'm very excited for the future of this channel, so thanks a lot for watching, take care and I'll see you soon.